Welcome back to this month's update, where we have our first ever special guest to present hyper performance for Python and R integration in CAS. We also will take a look inside of SAS information catalog, how you can control analysis even more than before. And we finish things off with awesome new steps and capabilities inside of SAS Studio. Let's go. Here we are inside of SAS information catalog where we can just have a request to analyze our data. This brings up a pop-up that might be familiar for you when you have used the ad hoc analysis before. What's new is this additional link that unlocks a hidden menu. Here we are inside of SAS information catalog where we can analyze the data. This brings up a pop-up, which, like before, triggers an ad hoc analysis. Through the link down below and the menu it opens up, you can now influence how the data is actually collected for you. So you can either overwrite how the rows are sampled or how many are sampled. You can go to column filtering, both by ordinal range and also by selecting the columns you are interested in. And you can also add additional options to how the run is done. Also, if you're just interested in having a new basic metadata profile run for you, you can also submit this as a request. And then this will finish like it usually does. As our data set is already um, collected, we will just go to SAS Studio to look at additional new features. In SAS Studio, I have prepared a new flow for you, which will highlight all the new features available to us. If we're taking a look at the steps pane, we see three new steps that are now available, which is in the examine data, the characterized data and describe missing data steps. And in the statistics, we have the, cor we have the correlation analysis step. All those three steps are now inside of my flow that I have built up. And let's take a look at what they can do. Describe missing data, of course, does what's on the cover. You can set your analysis variable. We can specify additional roles if we want to, and then we can just run the step. We will run the whole pipeline in just a second. And let's take a look at the characterized data where you can set variables here as well. And again, you can add additional customization for the character variables and add grouping variables. And also you can select the output behavior of that step, what you want to see in your output. Let's just run the whole swim lane to take a look at those results. And we can switch over to the submitted code and results and see the corresponding result outputs for our data. Next, we can go to the correlation analysis, where again, you assign an analysis variable and then you specify correlation variables, partial variables, and you again can specify additional roles to influence the correlation analysis behavior and also do that through options that you can set in the options page. Also, what you can do here is go to the output page and have those values written to data sets for you. Let's just run the swim lane and see what happens. We can see the output filled out and that usually means we get additional tables in work. And that's true. But first, let's take a look at the results. Again, here we get scatter plots and some Pearson correlation notification for us. With this new release, you can change the default output behavior. On the one hand, on an individual flow level, going to the properties pane of that flow and changing its default output library. You can either set it to the application default, which is equivalent to work, or you can change it to a library of your choosing, if you have write access, of course. Also, if you want to apply it more globally to all the 
different flows that you use within SAS Studio. You can go to Options, Preferences, go to Tables, scroll down to the default output libraries and change the behavior the same you could do for an individual flow. That's great if you have different needs or if you have some intermediate table that you would like to go back to in the future. So great way of handling that. Now, for the next part, I'm super happy to have a special guest, Eduardo, to show us the new CAS action gateway, which enables us to run Python and R directly in CAS and using a high performance interface to exchange data. Eduardo, over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Eduardo, and I have been invited by David to talk with you in this new Fireverse about the gateway action set. It is a new action set released by SAT that allows us to run Python and R code within our CAS cluster. So that means if we have a cluster of three, four, five machines, we can run Python in all of them, all at once, and read and write data from CAS very, very quickly. So well, let's not take one more time and let's go to action. Here we are at the SASE studio uh, running some Python scripts. So it is pretty straightforward to use the action set. We pretty much all we have to do is to load it, write some Python code that we want to send to our server. And then we say which code we want to run and in how many threads per node. In this case, we have just a single machine so it's going to run just four Python sessions, but if we had three machines, it would have uh, run 12. And this is how it works. It's pretty much, as you can see, a via verse here of sessions, of Python sessions. So how does it work to read and write table from CAS? So as an example, we are going to read a CSV file from Python. Then we're going to write a, a table in the CAS server, and then we're going to write read that table back to make sure that everything is working as intended. And let me actually run all of this. Uh, pretty much what we can see is that we wrote here our table and we printed. Every Python print is going to be in the SAS nodes all the time. Errors are also going to be listed here. And as you can see, the table info here. So we have uh, almost 6,000 rows here. That is very uh, well known from this data set. Um, what is very important? So, okay, what if I want to read that table in many Python sessions? How do we do that? Uh, the code doesn't really change. We're going to send gateway, read table, which table we want to read. And then we say, okay, we're going to read in six threads. Okay, so six Python sessions here. And you're going to notice, you're going to notice that the Python here, just one of the threads received the data. And that happens because the gateway always honors the way the data is spread out within the CAS clusters. So if you want the data to spread out among your Python, you have to maybe change the blocks of the data, or we can use the group by that we all know about in the CAS tables and use the mode to redistribute that. So when we do it, I'm going to even use more Python threads this, this time. We're going to see that the table is going to be spread out among all of our Python sessions, as long as it makes sense, actually. So here we go. Uh, each class went to a single Python thread here, but we don't have too many data sets, so some threads are actually empty. This is very important. We have to be mindful that if some thread not going to do anything, we have to take it in account because we are just spawning the many Python sessions, but we are not creating logic out of nowhere. This is up to the user to do. Okay, so this is how it works. Uh, another thing is, what if I want to read that table in all of my Python sessions? We can do that using this argument when reading table called repeat. All that the repeat is going to do is copy that same table to all of our Python sessions. Uh, and we have to be very mindful when doing that because if our table is too big, we are going to crash uh, our Python sessions eventually. So we don't really want to do that. 
But here you go. All of the Python sessions receive the same data. Uh, so if you have some table that you maybe want to join or something that all the Python threads need to have that information, this is how you can read that from the CAS server. And very important, so if we have too much uh, tables to read, uh, like tables that are too big to read, we can use what we call the new table writer and maybe the new table reader. So this allows us to read the tables in batches so we don't break our Python session. So we read just a part of the table, do what we have to do, write that back. And this is how it works. So we create here this new table writer and using the specs of the table that we're going to write to and also the new table reader here to list where we're going to read the table from and how many rows we want to read each time. So this is the batch size here. Um, as an example, this time I'm not listing how many threads I'm going to use. So we are going to use everything. So all of the tables, all of the threads going to read all of the Python tables and write them back. So we are going to have a new table that is very, very big. And as you can notice here, okay, we read like all of the threads here, like read, like wrote many batches here. So this is how it works. And as we will see here, that table is going to have almost 1,000, 100,000 rows here, exactly 95,000 rows here. So this is pretty much how it works. The basics, we read the table, do whatever we have to do, write back just the result or the table, what we need. But you probably paid attention that, well, this result here, it is empty. It's not returning anything to my Python, right? So really the action doesn't return anything by default, but you can return. We have this function called return table. So we can actually return the table to our Python session and use that down the road. So it works pretty much the same way. So we are reading the table from Baya and then sending to the client. So my Python, my local Python client here in this case, this table calling uh, any name here in this case. I want to also show you this gateway args so we can pass arguments for our session here. In this case, we are passing the name of the table that we want to have to get us a result here. So going this way. Now you're going to notice that the table is not just a print in the notes, but now it actually a table in our Python session here. So if I just run again, here this print RT, we're gonna see that this is a table locally. Yes, here we go. Uh, this is a summary of how the gateway works. It allows us to read the tables from the Python, from the CAS server very quickly and do whatever we want. I hope you'll like it and always refer to the documentation. See you next time. Thank you, Eduardo, for that great demonstration of this new capability. It's super exciting to see what's going on with these types of integrations and showcases how big the Viaverse really is. Let's take a look at new custom steps released this month. It's actually only one, but it's a good one. It's in the NLP category where we have seen a lot of stuff before, this time a tool to split sentences for you, which helps you within your for specific NLP tasks. So because we only had one, I will take a look at four awesome community articles. First up is a deep dive on the mitigate bias action and how you can tune its hyperparameters so you get optimized results. Next up is the ability to generating synthetic data using generative adversarial networks or GANs, which can help you if you have privacy in your data and general PII issues, or you just need more data to work with. We are sticking with this theme of bias in assess bias of Python models and automatically create scoring code for TensorFlow Keras models and much, much more. A super in-depth article showcasing what's new within Python, SAS CTL and SAS model manager. 
And finally, a super awesome article showcasing how you can operate your SAS via environment by chatting in MS Teams. Super cool utility and fun to use. That's it for this month's update video of SASWIRE 2023.11. As always, the first link down in the description takes you to an application where you can dive as deep as you want to in all of the new features released this month. See you next month. Bye-bye.